Okay, in this study, we're going to look at the Eighth Commandment. The Eighth Commandment uh, is, Thou shalt not steal. That's found in Exodus 20, verse 15. And the literal application of this is easy to understand. All right, we're not to take what is not ours. We are to respect the property of others. All right, stealing is stealing. What belongs to one person is his. What belongs to us is ours. And we're not to desire to take something from someone else. All right. Now, uh, but there is a spiritual application as well, as we are discovering it with all the Ten Commandments. Right, God is talking about his covenant. And here, he tells us we're not to steal. And uh, spiritually, we are not to take salvation, all right, in an unlawful way. All right. Salvation belongs to God. Salvation is a gift, the Bible teaches. And unless God gives us that gift, if we try to take that for ourselves on our own, then we are a thief. We are stealing. Right. Now, uh, in John 3, we'll start there. Uh, in verse uh, 27, we read, John answered and said, A man can receive nothing except it be given him from heaven. Right. Uh, we don't take salvation by ourselves, all right? Uh, salvation is a gift that has to be given to us. In Ephesians, um, or rather Romans, Romans 6, verse 23, we also read, For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. You see, salvation is a gift. It has to be given uh, to us from heaven, all right? If God doesn't give it to us, then we don't have it, all right? Also in Ephesians 2.8, <clears throat> we read Ephesians 2.8, For by grace are ye saved through faith, and that not of yourselves, it is the gift of God. Again, salvation is the gift of God. All right? And it's by grace. You see, we did nothing all right, to merit that salvation. All right? Now, those who... Um, uh, let's just look at John... Um, 10 for a minute before I continue. Uh, John 10, 1, we read, Verily, verily, I say unto you, He that entereth not by the door into the sheepfold, but climbeth up some other way, the same is a thief and a robber. All right, what Jesus is talking about here is that those who come with another gospel, they teach there's another way to become saved other than the Lord Jesus Christ. See, they, they are entering in unlawfully all right we have uh, we have to enter into the kingdom of god lawfully and the bible outlines what those rules are all right the bible teaches us that we cannot be saved by our works that's why it says for by grace are you saved all right it's unmerited favor Con uh, election is unconditional all right many churches teach that uh, God choosing of certain persons before the foundation of the world was conditional based on what he foresaw them doing, that they accepted him and therefore he elected them. All right, that they are thieves and robbers. That is not what the Bible teaches. All right, they are trying to enter the kingdom of God another way. And uh, because the Bible says in John, 1 John 4 10, this is love, not that we love God but that he loved us and gave his son to be a propitiation for our sins. See, we didn't love him. What did God see before the foundation of the world? He saw we didn't love him. All right, that's why the Bible says, no man seeketh after God. All right. Uh, they, they teach that, oh, they can pay for their sins in purgatory. And they, you know, they, they, they missed the Holy Eucharist too many times and they committed a lot of sins and therefore they're going to have to spend time in purgatory. Again, that is another way. They are climbing in through the window. They're not going through the door. The door is the Lord Jesus Christ. And we can only enter the kingdom of God 
through the Lord Jesus Christ. And uh, in um, John, uh, Matthew, Matthew rather, uh, 22, Matthew 22, um, I think I'm starting at um, verse 10. Yeah, verse 10. Uh, so those servants went out into the highways and gathered together all as many as they found, both bad and good, and the wedding was furnished with guests. And when the king came in to see the guests, he saw there a man which had not on a wedding garment. And he saith unto him, Friend, how comest thou in hither not having a wedding garment? And he was speechless. Then said the king to the servants, Bind him hand and foot, and take him away, and cast him into outer darkness. There shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth, for many are called, but few are chosen. All right, Matthew 22, verses 10 through 13, 14, rather. And you see, the man in this parable, the man without a wedding garment, all right, he came into the wedding unlawfully. He came in wearing his own righteousness, not the righteousness of Christ. Because that robe, that wedding garment, represents the righteousness of the Lord Jesus Christ. That's the spiritual meaning there. All right, that's also picked up in other parts of the Bible, like the book of Revelation, where the saints have white robes, and the white robes represent the righteousness of the saints. And, uh, and, and so uh, we see there that they try to enter in another way, and they were cast out. And only those who are God's elect, and whom God has chosen, will uh, will have that garment, all right? Because Christ died for them. You see, when they cast lots for Jesus' garments when he was on the cross, the soldiers, all right, not every soldier got Jesus' coat, did they? All right. I, I don't remember the verse offhand. It's in John. And uh, in the book of Proverbs, we read that men cast lots, but the Lord um, makes the matter work out. Right, he chooses, and and so that lot fell to that one soldier who got his coat. And spiritually speaking, that coat represents the righteousness of Christ, and and uh, God decided who was going to receive the righteousness of Christ. All right, not every soldier received that, and and that too, uh, we got to be careful that we're not devising our own salvation plan, that we have the truth, and, and that we are trusting and hoping in Christ that he is going to save us. A broken and a contrite heart, O oh God, that wilt not despise. Right? These are the sacrifices that God requires. He doesn't require us doing works, of sacrificing our lives in service to somehow become saved. In, in, in any kind of work that we do. All right, we are to rely totally on Him. All right. 